Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Welcome to Policy and Rights, the show about human rights and government policy. Welcome back, everyone, to uh, Policy and Rights um, here on Depictions Media Radio. And, of course, I'm your host, uh, Michael Cloggs. And today we have sometimes politician, definitely full-time educator, and um, one of the most involved activists that I know of for human rights and... um, and for just trying to promote democracy in our community and in our in, in our global community, Annie O'Hanna. So, <laughs> hey, so um, welcome to the show. And thank you. As, as yesterday, it was announced that there is a federal election, and it's going to last a whole whopping thirty-six days. So. Yeah, what a shocker, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I could have I could have some really strong opinions about that. Yeah. And and uh, and maybe I, I could say, oh hell, why not? I'm just gonna say this. I think that that Justin Trudeau is trying to pull a power play, and maybe knock some of the seats away from uh, from Jack Meat. Uh, you are not wrong. I mean, I, I laugh at the ridiculousness of it all, right? But but I just see no other reason for an election uh, except that, except for this political math of, you know what, let's try to grab more seats while we can, uh, mm-hmm. because certainly it has not been a smooth rise for liberals. Uh, and I don't mean because of COVID, I mean because of scandals and broken promises. So I just think they're really trying to cover themselves. And then I think you're right, try to steal away, um, you know, votes and, and, and even, to be honest, um, policies. Because at the end of the day, we know that the Liberals really didn't have uh, as good of a plan in terms of dealing with, with the pandemic as what the NDP were offering and, and you know, what the co- coalition government was able to put together at the end, right? Or the minority yeah. government, I should say. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. Um yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, that the the liberal plan was was totally reactionary, and yeah. the, and it, 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 in my ba- ba- basic and humble opinion, that um, that the Serb and uh, the SIBA plans that they needed to last at least ten to fifteen years because it's going to take that long for the economy to actually fully recover from a pandemic situation and we actually learned that a hundred years ago when there was the H H one N one pandemic that spread around the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um it, it lacked vision and and to be honest, in times of crisis that's when you really need to step forward. Mm-hmm. And, and I think what COVID showed us is that systemically our economic system doesn't work. I mean, most Canadians were deeply impacted economically. Uh, Millions were within one or two paychecks away from losing housing, uh, you know, not being, not having income security, right? All all sorts of insecurities were popping up that, you know, I think some folks who who have some privilege um, kind of stave away or don't think about, but then the second that, you know, the global economy shut down, we realized on, you know, how much of quicksand, you know, we, we all stand. And, and that's, to me, very telling of the policies we actually have. Mm-hmm. So when uh, curb, serve, however you want to say it, uh, you know, when that was put in place, uh, when the idea, as, as the NDP did start to talk about it, and others, I don't want to keep it to one party, but the fact that universal basic income started to be discussed. Uh, which before people would laugh at, and, and now all of a sudden, you know, uh, it, it's, a, it's a possibility. You know, all these things were coming out, but not because the Liberals had thought about it or had put it in place. And I think people need to remember that. Um, in a power grab election, 
you know, at the very least, an election is supposed to be about assessing whether a government has done its job. And and I don't think, especially, I mean, come on, it's been two years. Um, I really don't think the liberals have proven that they've done the job. Uh, they, they really, what it shows is that we need better leadership, if anything. Yeah. And, and let alone the, the true abandonment of so many other things. You know, I, 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 my heart reaches out to Afghanis everywhere who are in absolute crisis and and somehow the Canadian government 20 years of of being in that country and and we we you know we take this selfish approach of just saying well never mind you you know we have an election to run so there, there's yeah. a lot there to unpack when it comes to the leadership style of this government yeah I, in in um today's statement he did actually address um the Afghani uh, situation, okay. And uh, on the other hand, um, though Aaron O'Toole may did did make a a, a opposite t- that we need to focus on Canada. We need to just let them go. <laughs> and I'm like bet- between the t- the two of them is like, okay, you know what the these people are. Um, they they helped our, our our troops. They helped not uh, the U.S. and Canadian troops. And yep. the United States is, is seemingly perfectly happy to to abandon them. Yeah. And it it leaves it leaves the burden back on on Canada. It's like Justin, truly, uh, or Aaron, you 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 need to we need to step up to the plate because yep. these people they they put their lives on on the line for uh for for our soldiers for and for and for our beliefs and yeah. um well i'm disgusted it, to it, be it, honest and it, it the taliban just, just good they're going to hang them by some unmentional body part and torture them into, until yeah. they kill over it's not going to be yeah. a pretty death for them either way no no and, and as to be honest i'm quite disgusted by anyone really again doesn't matter the political party um that seems to all of a sudden have a wake-up call around like uh intervening right and and having like an imperialistic mindset and all of a sudden says oh no we, we shouldn't be going over there um you know that to me is, is kind of you're, you're really uh using arguments that you know nothing about um and and specifically as you pointed out we have specific families and groups of, of populations and i mean every afghani matters obviously right mm-hmm. um, but we have people that that are you know in the target of the taliban and they will be wiped out uh, even a uh, sikh you know there's several hundred sikh uh, afghanis who uh, if, if people remember if people recall in 1998 that there was a move by the taliban to force them to wear labels or like almost um, like the star of david right that, yeah. that hitler had implemented so we know that, that these groups, and of course, women, all of that, you know, are massive targets. And this idea that somehow, yeah, the Americans are calling it the Saigon moment, right? Like just a complete collapse and, and complete abandonment mm-hmm. of the people uh, to, to very violent totalitarian forces. Yeah. So I don't think now's the time to, to start playing this game of like, no, no, we, sh- you know, it, it should be us first. Um, we have lorded over the Afghanistan uh, populace for 20 years, suggesting that we somehow are yeah. saving them, when in fact, and I'm not putting down the veterans' efforts, right? I'm putting down that larger idea of Afghanistan has always been used as a proxy. Yeah. And the people have suffered immensely under the Soviet Union, you know, the Russians, the Americans, the Canadians, others, um, yeah. as this toy. Yeah. And and when it comes down to it, twenty years of the mission, why are the Taliban still this strong? Right? One has to wonder, right? What well, why that is. And yeah, and so for yeah. I mean I, I hope they continue to address it, but I think I would have been partially impressed if Trudeau had said, you know, literally in the last twenty four hours we've seen Kabul fall and the president um escape. Uh, you know, we, we need to delay things. I mean, wouldn't that be refreshing? Um, to, to actually say, you know what, maybe now is not the right time, but of course not. That would that would have been uh, that would have been a, a a more humanitarian move, I think. You know? Yeah. Um. It, it, in as far as you, you're you're absolutely correct uh, that um, Afghanistan has 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 been the punching bag of 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 the Cold War. Um, 
it, so to speak, it's for almost yeah. 40 years now. Yeah. You know, yeah. they had, they had, um, they, they had, uh, the, the U S uh, supplied them with, with, um, with arms to fight against the Russians yeah. for a while. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and then as, uh, as the Soviet, the Soviet union fell apart, they, um, they, that I, I suppose that's when the when the Taliban actually really really got a strong yeah. foothold. But yeah. they were also they were they were also the, the, the freedom fighters fighting against the <laughs> the Soviet Union, trying to yeah. keep them out of the they were it's just, it's the same yeah. it, it's the same families. And I'm saying yeah. it's the same families because because this thing in the fighting in Afghanistan has gone from the time I was a child to me, me almost being the age to have grand grandchildren. You know what right. I mean? Right. <laughs> right. So, yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. So, so this this has been the same families fighting fighting the battle, and it makes you, it does make me wonder since everything fell back into the Taliban hands so quickly, yeah. is is this the case of of the, these were just the strong families to begin with? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I think as as North Americans, and, and, and again, you know, there were other, like the British were involved, you know, uh, I don't like to use the word the West, right? Just because, you know, we know what that means. But um, but but in the sense of, of North America, we don't understand cultural realities. Uh, you know, the, the Islamophobia that, that kind of was part of that whole post-9-11 idea, right? Uh, we need to go here. We need to go there. We need to attack Iraq. Um, you know, like, like this, this glean of like, oh, we're here to save the women, you know, we're here to bring education back, you know, like, uh, I remember like there was the whole thing that debacle about the burqa, right? Yeah. Um, the, the sense that somehow, you know, um, everybody needed to not wear the burqa, you know, like, like not even listening to women, right? Not even listening to, um, right. religious scholars, right? Things of that nature. Um, and so we see this, we see this ongoing, yeah. you know, they go in, they, they want to quote unquote remove all the bad elements, right? So whether it's the government or whatever it is. And to be honest, you know, if, if folks are Taliban, then just go home, right? Go yeah. home, switch the color of your turban and lay low, right? Yeah. Lay low yeah. until, and, until the, the, you know, the powers that be, the ones that are supposedly the saviors get, get tired of you. And that, this is what happened, right? Yeah. Um, America, Canada, et cetera, the whole thing, they couldn't win. Um, they, they, you know, and so eventually, you know, their eyes started to waver elsewhere, right? right? And and again, like the people themselves were not the actual point, right? They're like you know, yeah. the actual reality. I, I love how you put it, right? That that punching bag. They were once again the punching bag. Yeah, and and, and I'm so happy to see local leaders, uh, especially uh, women, uh, Afghani women. I, I've seen it in Surrey, Lower Mainland, and I'm sure, and across Canada uh, that have really been strong, strong fighters for a real sense of justice within the Canadian government to to help in the right way, right? To, to kind of let the Afghans, you know, center themselves. And then, you know, when, where the help is needed, you know, kind of work with that. I, I, I do acknowledge that yeah. work, and I know it's going to have to work even harder now during the election, uh, and even maybe after that, because the 20,000 number that's floating around, um, again, it's very shallow. It doesn't deal with the realities of what many Afghans are talking about, which is, you know, what's happening on the ground. Yeah. Right, you can't just hollow out the country. Right, that's not going to resolve uh, the the inhumanity that that's occurring in Afghanistan. Yeah, the the other thing, the, the, the look, move, moving on to uh, to to to, to yeah. Israel, uh, because mm -hmm. because um, as we remember, Anime Paul was was criticized for um, for being uh, anti-Semitic because she didn't support Israel. Okay, yeah. now. If, there is one very true fact about Anime Paul, and um, is she is a practicing Jew. Yeah. But let's face it: um, when our allies don't do do, do something unjust, we need a government that's in there that's going to tell them, "Hey, you have done something unjust." You know, Absolutely. we don't yeah. we don't need we don't need a government that, that that's going to to say, well, you know, 
you and but we're going to support you on this and then if somebody who's sitting on sitting up on parliament hill says hey they they messed this up we need yep. to we need we need to call them on that and then you yep. slap you slap them back by calling by calling them uh, a racist yeah, that's that's Absolutely. something interesting, interesting altogether. That should never have happened. Yeah, you yeah. know, as, as a Jew myself, um, I always think, you know, from from what I know, I'm not an expert, but but the way I was taught was that you know, being a Jew means you need to question, right? You need to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And when I think about leadership, when I think about government, you know, we and especially democracy, we have the right to question policy. We have the right to question governments and their actions. And when I hear language out of the Israeli government um, that says, you know, no, you need to have blind faith, right? Anybody who speaks against the Israeli government um, is being anti-Semitic. I, I just, I, yeah. I, I can't believe that's coming out of their mouths. It's a complete distortion. Um, and you, you know, we talk about the Taliban. I absolutely believe that there are elements within the Israeli government, you know, within yeah. uh, so much of the movements about that, um, that is just as extreme as the Taliban. Yeah. Because you are removing elements of the Jewish faith that allow you to question, that allow, and, and you know, and the fact that many Palestinians and, and you know, I, I'm a Sephardi Jew, I'm an Arabic Jew from Morocco. Um, we used to have peaceful coexistence, right, in in Arab states, right, in Islamic faith. Yeah. Um, it, it's fascinating to see the erasure of history, to see the erasure of of our backgrounds. Um, in terms of that it is possible, that we don't have to be enemies. And it's just feeding this fire more and more of this very Christian white supremacist idea that somehow, you know, the Jews, you know, there's all these yeah. tropes that come okay. out of Christianity. And, and this idea of this, like, you know, we need uh, the Messiah to come, and this happens at the cost of, of Muslims and Jews. Right, yeah, like, like, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to stop you for a second there, okay? Yeah, and I went. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to remove Christian, okay? Because because yeah. okay. I am, I am a practicing follower sure. of, of Jesus Christ, and yeah. um and Jesus Christ taught that we were supposed to be tolerant of each other. We were supposed to love right. each other. Okay? Right. So, Absolutely. So and I'm going and I'm going to focus. I want to fine tune what you're saying to. The white supremacist. Love it. Sure. Yeah. Not a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah because, I hear you. Because, because, My apologies. Because, it be, because, because yeah. in the in the in the uh, um um the uh Islamophobes because they're yeah. they're a, they're a specific group of people that yeah. Um, I, 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 I don't want them to be part of my, uh, of, of my following. Absolutely. I don't Absolutely. Want them in yeah. there. No, it's fine. Sorry because if I went too hard on that. No, I, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. I just want to clarify this for, for yeah, the people yeah. listening. Because, well, well, because Jesus Christ was, it was, it was, what, he was a Jew. And, Absolutely. And if I, to, I, if I was a part of following him, I yeah. had to I had to follow Jewish tradition and say, yeah. hey, I need to question what these people are yeah. saying. Yeah, because he yeah, no. that. And, and you know what? I'll add more to that. That shows you how you know the, the majority is silenced, right? Those yeah. of us that that want to live peacefully, that that want to see the undoing of systemic structures that that separate us, right? That suggest yeah. that somehow you know the Palestinians can't exist, right, or don't exist. Um, and and these are movements with uh, that have that have really distorted faith. So to me, like faith mm -hmm. is is very key, and and I think amazing things can happen with faith. But yeah. this man made religion, this idea of somehow yeah. you know that you know like the, where the rules are so strict that you can never question, you can never reach out. Uh -huh. And yes, and you know uh -huh. what? And that uh -huh. speaks to every single religion, right? Yeah. Um, because, but you're right. Because I, but, I, consi yeah. I consider myself to be to be your brother in faith. We share yeah. that. We share Absolutely. the same faith. We share Absolutely. that faith that that, yeah. that loves, it trusts, and 
and um, and and offers people everyone a right to live the way they, the way they feel they need to live as long as you're Absolutely. as long as it doesn't include hate. Sorry. And, Sorry, and, guys, and I guess the bigger the point then, yeah, is that within that idea that somehow. Like, it feels theocratic, right? And this, this mm-hmm. sense of that, you know, the religion is so tied to the state. And, and we know that it is. I mean, the laws are there in Israel yeah. that say that. But, but that's problematic, because then they turn around and say the same thing about Iran, right? Or, you know, we look at Canada and residential schools and the Catholic Church, right? And this idea, you know, exactly. so to me, that separation of church and state is, is massively important. And I think we have the it right is. to question that without, as, as you rightly corrected me, without... Uh, criticizing or, or putting down, uh, you know, someone's faith. So mm-hmm. I absolutely believe, you know, you can be strongly supportive of Jewish people, but still criticize well, the Israeli state, right? Yeah, I think exactly. that's entirely yeah, that's, doable. That's, that's exactly the, the point here, is yeah. the, the Israeli state has, has no right to keep encroaching upon the Gaza Strip the yeah. way they are, and 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 narrowing continuously narrowing out um the 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 the, the palestinian uh land the yeah. the palestinians yeah. do have a right to to actually share that land and yeah. if if we were to go back and look at the land of canaan canaan was meant to be shared yeah. it wasn't supposed to be t- just just to be one one group of people there they were supposed to share it yep yeah. Yep. It, it, it was a land of sharing, but yep. um, but colonial mindsets don't allow that, th- right? We see yeah, that that's, across that's the, whole the world. Thing. Like when we, they don't want to share, and 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 that's that's a major well, issue. You know, it's yeah. not you know you either follow me or, or death, right? And unfortunately, that's yeah. what's happening in Israel is that all these all their policies, uh, security policies, etc. Um, there's no actual like human rights there. It's simply that we control it and we do what we want. Again, very colonial. Right. And so, and, and we can actually go go back through history, and we can start with Scotland and Ireland. It mm-hmm. happened, happened to to them, and then they brought it. Hey, we found this ship, and we found this guy Columbus. If yeah. if you if you go go that way, um, yeah. And hey, there's this large chunk of land. Well, they don't know what they're using it for anyway, and that's what it all boils <laughs> down to. We, we, they yeah. don't know what they're doing. We know best because we carry the big crucifix, and that's what yeah. it boils down to. We carry the big yeah. crucifix. Therefore, we know what we're doing with the land, and we're just gonna. We we have to yank the Indian from out of them, yeah, and and it and and that's what they're doing again. If we look at Palestine, you're trying to, it's it's another it's another form of genocide. The way they're trying to push the Palestinians out, it is genocide. If you look at it, you know I you know I teach the ten steps of genocide, and that actually. Was, was developed, I mean, there's different versions of it, variations, but the 10 steps that I use come out of um, some, some Jewish scholarly work. Mm-hmm. And it's the steps that people need to realize that, you know, it goes everything from identification, you know, ostracization, uh, concentration, so like something like, you know, Gaza Strip, for example, mm-hmm. you know, all the way to the 10 step of denial. And, and that, to me, is very telling. So you look in Canada and America and Europe and in Asia and in, in Africa, uh, in the Middle East, you see this denial, right? And, and so to me, it's like, stop asking to see all the bodies, even though they're there, but also what are some of the steps being taken? Right. right, the fact that you need passes, there are borders, the fact that people don't have access to electricity and water, like there's so many levels to this. Yeah. So many levels to this, right? Um, and, and that's what people need to be critical about. Like, you know, actually investigate what's going on here and, and look at the policies for what they are. Um, and, 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 you know, because we know that that word genocide, like, because it holds legal ramifications, et cetera, mm, it, um, it, it allows for all sorts of sin, though, when we deny it. We are finding thousands of children's bodies here in Canada. We knew this. We knew this for well over a hundred years that there were parents, there were indigenous parents talking to Duncan Campbell Scott in official hearings uh, about the, the realities of, of day schools and residential schools in, in the 1920s, right? Like it's yeah. an official record. And, and, you know, it takes us until 2021 to even just start to talk about it, but we need to find the bodies first. And yeah. that's my problem with a lot of this 
is that we always wait to react and we don't think, you know, preventative. And, and what does it mean for a government to actually make policy that is good for its people? Um, right. and, and again, right, it takes us right back full well, circle to the idea we, of, we, you know, we, the powers we, of government. When, when, we look, when we look at the residential schools, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. The, the, the current government is saying, um, and even the provincial governments are saying, hey, um, we're, we're, we're going to doll out so many dollars um, it's in the millions, I suppose, uh, to help you find find the bodies, help you find the graves. We mm-hmm. we want to help find find these lost people, okay? These lost children. We want to help find them. Where is the change? Where yeah. is the statement that we want to ensure that this can't happen ever again? Yeah. And th- no one wants to make that statement. And no one, no one, no, no one publicly wants to, wants to come out and say, "Hey, the law's still on the books that we can keep doing this." Yeah. When 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 are we going to change the change the the um, the policy so that it can't happen again? It can't happen to it can't ha- no it can't happen to the indigenous people, and it can't happen to. Uh, the Afghanis are going to come over as refugees. They yeah. all of a sudden they decide, oh well, they're not worthy, and we're just going to take their children. And yeah. you know, when yeah. are we going to? When are, as citizens, when are we going to demand that to happen? Right. Uh, and yeah, well, and it shows a deep seated nature of you know what what settler colonial privileges, what white how deep white supremacy is entrenched, mm-hmm. right? that yeah. we don't push into that level. Two things for me is, number one, when it comes to BIPOC communities, uh, you know, you, you criminalize, right? So you might not take the children away directly, but you make sure that, you know, the, ki- you know, the, the kids who are brown, black, people of color are the ones that you treat, right? Yeah. Um, you see that in our prisons, et cetera. You see that in our, in our uh, policies with policing, right? Uh, in terms of racial profiling. And, and my thing that I, that I want to hear more of because I've heard it from a couple people. You know, I'm not, I don't want to say nobody's saying it. There are, and I mean like politicians. Um, I want to hear more of the fact that these children, it wasn't just bad priests and bad nuns and, you know, this kind of bad apple rhetoric. Mm-hmm. It's that this was the systemic removal of humans from land so that that land could be taken, stolen, and profited off of that this was absolutely about the money, it was about economy. You know, Terra Nullius wasn't this idea of like, oh, but they had never seen the land before, right? They had never seen those people before. They knew exactly what they were doing, and they did it to, 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 to very much oppress so that they could take over and hold that economic su- superiority and then build the racial superiority and all these other mechanisms. And until I hear that, until I hear yeah. that this mass murder and genocide and these schools were forms of warfare and ways to economically destroy a population so that we could benefit as settlers to the tune of trillions of dollars, then I, I don't want to hear it. I don't yeah. want to hear that you're sad about the kids dying, that these schools were horrific. Like, that's not enough because it doesn't identify the actual structure that the Indian Act was meant to create. And that was to empty this yeah. land because we knew what this land was worth. We so, did not give a crap about children. They were obstacles to our economic, um, you know, growth and, and oppression. Yeah. So let, let's, let's, because you said something really important there, systemic racism and policing. Mm-hmm. And, um... I'll, I'll be to- totally uh, it, it, in in the policing. It go it really does go beyond just the RCMP. Um, yeah. Because w- today I I was walking through um through through a store in in the shopping mall today with 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 my wife, and mm-hmm. um all of a sudden I picked up a store security guard. Now <laughs> everybody who listening knows knows that I have darker skin and long yeah. curly hair. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's like 
It's like, okay, I said to my wife, I said, you know what? I said, let's just get out of the store and, and, and go home because I didn't, I didn't feel like dealing with being profiled. And, and that's what our, our country, it does it. It, it does that. It, it profiles people and it singles people out so that there, there's a reason why the, the jails are full of uh, visible minority people and not as many privileged um, Caucasian people. And I'm not saying that to be racist. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm really not saying no, no, no. that to be to be racist. It is because it because it actually happens that that they the the bad guy is they they have a picture of him and that picture looks doesn't doesn't have blue eyes, blonde hair, and light skin. Yeah, yeah. You know. He's Very always true. the good guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's in. It's even in in our movies. It's like, it's like it. It's so so. It is you know, absolutely It's corrupt. frustrating. Frustrating to be to be profiled. It's frustrating yeah. that um, if I if if I show up in an emergency room because because um, because I had a, a a twisted ankle or something like that because I, I tripped over a curb. I show up in an emergency room that they that um, they ask questions about. Oh, I wonder what his what his talk screen is going to look like. Right. This yeah. is this is systemic racism, and yeah. this is the face of it. And what, what if? Okay, we're in an election. So now's the time to actually cast that vote, to start making that change, to put people in place that want to make that change. A hundred percent. And I think, you know, the language that you're using, the specificity, the detail, um, you know, we need to hear that from people that want our vote. Um, I know I'm listening for it, right? I know I'm going to ask about it because mm -hmm. there's always a way to get away with saying just enough, right? The bare minimum. Um, I, I'm, I remember, you know, the words of Angela Davis are always ones that strike me that the idea that it's not enough to be non-racist in a racist society, one must be anti-racist. So, you know, when, when, you know, every, you know, I know Trudeau has says, oh yeah, there's systemic racism, right? We know this. I mean, pretty much most politicians will, will say that, but how does it look like within our healthcare system? What does it look like in terms of racial profiling? You know, what are the specific yeah. ways that we undo this, this system of white supremacy. Right. Because just saying it exists is not enough because I would include Trudeau in this. I don't think he'd ever say that he's racist. And we know that's problematic. You know, Abraham X. Kennedy said, right? It, it, if it, you it, can't it, admit it, you're racist, then, then you're racist. Right. Here, he, and here's here's part of, the, part of the thing with that. When he, he does have... Um, he does have a, a say in the policing, and um, while uh, while the 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 RCMP while while he has been prime minister, uh, during, especially during this this pandemic, when a a man's nephew asked the police to to help him enter enter the man's home because he has um, some sort of mental health problem. And they decide to enter the the, um, the the man's home with assault rifles and flashbangs. Yeah. And the end result was um, a who a, a man who who may have a have a mental disease, um, a mental illness, is now shot and killed. Yeah. It's yeah. like something's uh, something's not right here. But the, but the same gentleman who w who was killed by the RCMP um, was a Muslim. Yeah. He had darker skin, and he wore it, um, a type of a turban. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 we know that it exists. Trudeau will admit to, that it exists, but what has he done to make the 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 top cop of the country start changing that system? What has he done? What action so exactly, has he taken? And, and I hope people realize 
when we talk about policing, it's a much larger issue. So when you ask the question, what has Trudeau done? You know, there's this great saying of like, you know, who protects us, we protect us. How is he making changes to our mental health system, our, our health care, mm-hmm. our, our income, right? The way we, we earn money, our communities. How are we making, you know, how are we empowering, right. you know, indigenous, black, people of color communities, you know, to, to actually, you know, kind of, not, I don't want to say manage themselves, but, but not have to rely on policing, right? Why does it always have to be this issue of criminality? Um, really, yeah. the reason why folks want to see less policing and defunding of police is that we can put so much, um, so much more effort and, and power and, and resources into our education system, into, you know, uh, mm-hmm. strengthening our culture and our identities. And that's the point. So right. to me, it's not just like, oh, you know, he said this or, you know, the RCMP are going to quote unquote reform. It has much more to do with, and do you see the larger picture of what it means to feel safe, to feel healthy, and to actually lead a life where you can actually be who you are? And that's something that a lot of Canadians cannot do. Because right. as, uh, going back right back to your original point, you know, can you walk in a mall, right, mm-hmm. without someone looking at you differently? Yes. Right. Can you can you have a mental health um, breakdown and not be murdered for it? Right. right. L- like th- there's yeah. and and the fact that you're right, there is a, absolutely a color differentiation there between how both of those situations white people you know find themselves in and and people of color, indigenous black folks find themselves in. Um, mm-hmm. and, and that's my bottom. Yeah. That, again, goes right back to the point. Like when yeah. you're voting, look at all the policies. Yeah, it it and it's uh, see see what one of the things that I do do like about you, Annie, is the fact that that um you under you understand that that you're one you're you're one of the people being looked at. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know you know that it that that it that's like wow he's actually looking over my shoulder wow look yeah. at that <laughs> yeah it's yeah. and. And there's so much that we that this should happen that we that we can actually change that. Okay, which leads me to to something else that has happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and coming um, weeks into into coming to the point we are now, we had three very prominent um, women politicians say that they are not seeking re-election. Yeah. And one one was a liberal. One was well. She was formerly a, li- a liberal until yeah. until she got beat up really bad um, yeah. over um, o- over a, a crisis that happened in in Quebec. Yeah. Um, and one um, was a uh, in- NDP young lady um, mm-hmm. in none of it. Yeah. And. Why? Why did? Why did? Did these three women decide that that what what is actually happening in Ottawa that these three women decided that it's time for me to step away? I'm no longer being effective. That that I'm no longer have teaming to have a voice. Why is that? That's a really good question. I think number one is for especially for women of color that do so much heavy lifting in their communities mm-hmm. um, in terms of fighting for their rights, uh, in terms of, you know, standing up against, you know, oppressive realities. Uh, I, I think we need to stop seeing them as, as like these young things, you know, or like it, it almost, whenever you see coverage, it's almost like they came out of nowhere, right? But they didn't. They're already, you know, leaders and thought leaders and, and, and all kinds of incredible. Yeah. And then they're put into a system where they're diminished. Yeah, where they're told, you know, you're a backbencher, uh, you're tokenized, and God forbid you disagree with what the government says. Yeah. So, you know, Jody Rabel Wilson and her role, SNC Lavalin, absolutely an example of that. Mm-hmm. When you dare criticize your own caucus, right, your own leadership, all of a sudden, the little bit of power or privilege you thought you had by winning that seat absolutely disappears. So there's an ongoing, like, infantilization, and, and yes, and racism, and, and, you know, a whole, I mean, they're all connected, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, patriarchal reality, when you really think about it, of, 
you know, oh, good for you. You've done this work. Let's have you run for us. And then the second, you know, you walk into those chambers, you realize that the system wasn't built for you. So you, yeah. but it wasn't built for you. You're, and to transform that system is very difficult. Yeah, you're you're using, um, and, and I, I apologize to... Um, to our activist leader um, in uh, in in none of it um, because I'm about to butcher her name, uh, Malwa Kwai. That you're using almost almost the same words that she actually used in her yeah. exit speech. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. M- uh, Mumalak. Yes, is, is yeah. her first name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I I watched her incredible speech and. And I mean, it was shocking to me, I'll be honest, because I really thought, like, look at her go, right? And, and that perhaps, I don't know, in some sort of way, uh, would see some light. And when she spoke to, like, you know, the very uh, vitriolic day-to-day racism she was facing, uh, amongst many other things, uh, again, I go back to my original point, why? Why right. put yourself through that? when you already are doing so much amazing work on the ground mm-hmm. and as much as yes, I did run for office. I, I even said, then most politicians are just rubber stamps. The work happens on the ground. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that that doesn't mean we need to change our system. Of course we need to change it, but why should that be on the shoulder of one individual who already has to fight so hard just to make space to literally exist? let alone take actual positions of leadership. And while it was incredible to see Jody Rabel Wilson as attorney general, Mm -hmm. um, clearly there were limitations put on her that no other attorney general had before. Um, And and I can only imagine all the other opinions she had, right? I do wonder about our current governor general um, in terms of being Inuit herself and being in this colonial role. Like, how does that feel like? Right? Like, yes, you've made inroads, and you're the first, and, and it's a very yeah. interesting position to be in. But, but you know, that, that deeper lens of, you know, how do we decolonize all of this? Um, and and where, what will she think in, in a matter of, of months, if not, you know, you know, not less so, right? Well, it, it, interestingly uh, enough, um, that they, they all of a sudden they, they found her after... Um, after a, a, a member of parliament, a Inuit men, a member of parliament steps away, they instantly found her. Yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting. And I also thought it was kind of interesting that um, the governor general before her, they they found uh, this famed astronaut um, woman to 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 take to take the position is like. Well, what is what is the statement that that Trudeau is trying to make with with uh, with hiring women who who are activists and um, and and putting them in, into into this into this role? What is he trying to say? You know, because yeah. he, he yeah. he's got to be making some kind of he's trying to make some kind of statement out of it that he oh, keeps absolutely. putting. The, Absolutely. And, and I think those who are more critical would say it's just a token act, right? Mm-hmm. Um, now, you know, I, I find that sometimes folks who are tokenized can sometimes grab that opportunity. I'm not saying tokenism is an opportunity, but, but, but they will transform, right? That, that they, will, they will literally kind of take up the challenge, right? And, and not just overcome it, but kind of throw it back at the person's face. Um, and I, I don't know, because I, I get it. I, I think it's so hard to, I think we all get it. I think it's so hard to live in a system not built for you and to realize how much you're criminalized and you try to fight that system, especially if you're black, indigenous, or, you know, in a person mm-hmm. of color community. And sometimes you wonder, well, what if I did sit in that chair, right? What if I was part of that team? You know, would I face less repercussions, right? Would I be able to get my message out better? And I don't know the answer, to be quite honest. I think it's up to each person. But I do. I can tell you this. Anyone I know running for office who uh, is BIPOC, a woman of color, LGBTQ, um, very clearly I tell them, like, you're in for a rough ride. 
You're yeah. in for a rough ride. And don't expect claps. Don't expect people to just, you know, uh, support you 100%. And don't expect the, the the party you're running for, and I mean all parties. I don't, you know, yeah. don't expect these these systems to actively change for you, right? Just because you you know you somehow made it through and, and are the candidate, no, right? It is. Um, it, it isn't yeah. going to be like you crossed the golden gate and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And for that matter, um, uh, look how they they've tried to. Um, put a criminal face or a terrorist face to Jagmeet Singh. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, he's, he, because he, he's standing there following his, his religion. Um, yeah. Because he didn't cut his hair. Um, and, and because, uh, again, it, he has a dark skin, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, I often, I often say, I mean, I, I know Jagmeet is very uh, likable, affable, a very good human being, mm -hmm. um, but look at how much he has to put himself out there. You know, TikTok, Instagram, all kinds of things to overcome the insidious, that's what it is, you know, that they'll put out these kind of balloons, right? And it'll be absolutely racist and unconscionable, immoral kind of unethical kind of statement. They'll never own it, but it's out there, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 you know, it, it causes just enough of a stir that Jagmeet has to answer. Yeah. That, you know, that, that anybody who, who, you know, sits in, is, in, his, in similar shoes has to prove themselves, right? Like the yeah. model minority, right? Like show yeah. us that, yeah. you know, you're not what we say you are. Yeah, it's exactly. Is, Exactly you know, it. to begin with, right? Yeah, that's it, that's um, exactly it. Um, yeah, and, and I'm or, not saying or, that he shouldn't do those things, or that he's 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 not good at that, or that that it, that's not an awesome way to no, be. But he, but I don't see a lot of other politicians that that feel the need, especially I would say white males, who feel the need to do that. They can kind of get away with stuff sometimes. But but I also yeah. Canadians need to know that too. That it's a very dirty game, a uh, political game, and and BIPOC individuals truly face horrendous horrendous harassment um and very much you know two-faced kind of gaslighting you know they're nice to you to your face but the second you turn around you know it's a whole different story well he, he um I'm, I'm gonna move on to to anime paul yeah. in, in a second after i say yeah. this um mm -hmm. but um the day he called um called someone parliament floor a racist and wouldn't apologize and, and stood by his words and wouldn't apologize for it yes that that yep. that that sh that showed what kind of man he truly is yeah yeah that the the, the the honesty that is that is buried deep inside of him it showed it yep. and and i i and i i had to say well i was told by a few other friends is like well all he had to do was apologize and you wouldn't have to leave the floor i said i would have left the floor too <laughs> i would have left no yeah, i would no absolutely. this is this is this is my stand here right here this is my line i i i i, I gotta i gotta stand here i gotta stand here and if that means i have to leave the floor then i left the floor standing my ground and and, and how much evidence do you need I mean, that one statement, that, that's the tip of the iceberg. We're, again, as you pointed out, we're hearing from women refusing to run again. who are giving you volumes of evidence of racism. I think Jagmeet was very smart to do that. And I think he was thinking not just about himself and in that moment, but also the legacy of, of what that parliament yeah. does on a daily basis. And, and I, I, it would have been problematic to me if you just kind of apologize and, and, you know, and, and kind of uh, you know, bend, you know, bend over backwards trying to appease. Mm -hmm. You know, a system yeah. that, you know, continuously is racist, it, it, right? It, it and again, been, some people, it, it, they individualize it too much. Yeah, it would have been the, yes, I'm, uh, 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 yeah, yes, I'm sir, I'll, I'll back down now. Uh, you're right. I, I'll just go over here, back in my place. No, he stood his ground. Um, the, and I had to, I had to hand hand this to uh, to Anime Paul on the same, on the similar issue of, when she's been by, by the by the mass media, she's been asked questions about why she was being anti-Semitic and why she was and she was being asked questions about being 
racist. And yeah. she point blank said, this is not the issue that we're talking about right now. I will not answer those questions. And if you're going to ask me those questions, please go. This is what we're talking about. We're talking yeah. about the these particular issues. And yeah. We are going. We, we and she wouldn't. And she wouldn't address them. I thought that 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 there you go. You're standing your ground, and that's yeah. what we need. We need more more people. When we go to the polls, when we cast our vote, we need more people to stand that ground. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And and realize that that work is always dangerous. And that you need to be able to not be blinded by, by media that will spin it in a million ways. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, because that's what's happening. Like, we're believing, you know, these narratives that aren't real. But I want people that are able to stand up and, and stand their ground because we know how hard of a fight it is to make these changes. Mm -hmm. And that if you're just constantly apologizing or biting your tongue, nothing will change. Yeah. So, Nothing will change. And you know what? And, and it's very telling if the very best continuously leaves the system after mm -hmm. just, you know, one term or two terms or whatever, um, that needs to be a huge red flag. Yeah. A huge red flag. Um, and I think I think we're there in Canada, right? You know, you know I, I tell students all the time, resilience is not the same, you know, as actual transformation. Resilience is you just putting up with the system and, and being strong enough to do so, but that means that nothing changes, right? And I don't mean like their efforts, but like by, by the by the oppressor themselves. But to resist and to actually transform means you're not letting people just struggle and barely, you know, hold their neck above water. And if we don't have people that are willing to, you know, kind of leave that system or at least abandon like the protocols then then honestly you're just voting for people that are willing to let all kinds of sin go um and that's unfortunately our system right toe the line toe the line you can't go against your caucus right um mm -hmm. these are larger issues obviously but it's all wrapped up it's all intersectional right it, it, and absolutely people who are bipoc or any other marginalized group you know see that very clearly yeah so, um, one last question, in, 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 mm -hmm. as we, as we're running out of time here, yeah. um, what do you see as um, just list them out again because we we discussed most of the key issues, but um, yep. it just list them out one by one, which you think the key issues are that we should be looking for in um, within the election and that actually are are sitting there outside of the election need that need to be addressed yeah <laughs> it seems like a really long list um in no particular order just because I, I you know i'm trying to think on on the spot here um i think there's some real economic questions so coming out of COVID, i, I know we're still in COVID, to be quite honest but in terms of things like curb or universal basic income, like how do we shore up our economy uh, in ways that are more secure, are less based on like this, you know, this capitalistic growth that just leaves everybody behind? Because millions of Canadians uh, would have lost everything had we not, you know, taken uh, hugely dramatic action. And I and I do and, and just as 2019, you know, you can take half-hearted steps. But when these crises come and you realize that people can't afford their homes, they can't afford, you know, not to work for more than a couple of weeks, you know, all these kind of realities, I think that's a really big issue. Uh, I found myself thinking there is something incredibly wrong here if Canada could not survive, you know, most Canadians could not survive even three weeks outside of work. Uh, I think that is a major issue. Um, I think that improvements to health care, uh, everything from the idea of how we spend our money, you know, when, when the conservatives shut down the, the vaccination manufacturing to, to, to also just realities around pharmacare. So again, like making life more affordable um, is, is incredibly crucial and, and that goes to a lot of different directions. I think uh, indigenous sovereignty, uh, indigenous rights, and that goes much further than just reconciliation. I, I, to be honest, I think reconciliation is dead. 
And and what I mean by that is that the settler colonial folks that kind of picked up on that, and I, I, just to be clear, I, I'm, I'm a settler, <laughs> but, you know, like, you know, when we started talking about that, we did not understand what that truly meant. We're still in the truth phase, and, and we really need to aim for justice. So I know that might not be the, the hot-button issue, like, for some folks, but to me, um, any sense of true leadership and true change, we have to see that within that Indigenous perspective. And that ties into environmental policy. So when are we going to stop subsidizing the failing industries of fossil fuel extraction? When are we going to have a government willing to take on the nuance of, you know, a green economy? So that it's not just about, oh my God, the oil workers, the oil workers, but you know you need oil. You know, all these kind of red herring conversations that mean nothing. Um, you know, where's that vision and leadership to show how Canada can really be a leader here and, and just invest, put proper investment uh, instead of criminalizing people that are standing up for their environmental rights, uh, instead of criminalizing Indigenous folks and other folks, you know, and, and then subsidizing oil industry, you know, like no tomorrow, when do we actually, you know, focus in on how Indigenous sovereignty, uh, how, you know, climate justice, you know, how that is truly transformative. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, there, there's so much more. I, I, so many Canadians are concerned about foreign policy, uh, you know, how Canada acts around the world or, you know, like our, our, our military sales, you know, all, all kinds of things of that nature. And obviously with Afghanistan, you know, Ecuador, other other realities that, that stand out, um, you know, can we show leadership in, in those dynamics as well? Um, and I know there's more. Am I missing anything? <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, sure there's no you you yeah. you got 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 a, got a, bun a bunch of them that I think are definitely at the top of the list, um, even even including uh, um, the oil and gas industry, you know, um, because uh, Aaron O'Toole is saying, oh, we need to protect the oil workers. That that's that's the only way Canada can make money. That's the only way Canada can par participate in uh globally is by putting by 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 uh pumping carbon into the air um and it, justin trudeau is isn't much better on that issue when you consider that nope. he bought the pipeline yeah. don't forget he bought the pipeline <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> the only the only two we, two we out there evidence? that are talking uh talking truly green energy are yeah. uh jagmeet and anime paul yeah, and we see evidence of oil companies, you know, giving money that was meant to support their workers, you know, back to shareholders, right, instead. Mm -hmm. um, and I always say, like, let's go talk to the oil workers, to be quite honest. Let's talk to the folks who now live in ghost towns, because natural resource extraction was part, you know, was their main economic driver, and then all of a sudden either dried out or, or the companies lost interest. Uh, and also, I, I, I honestly... Why is so much taxpayer dollars going to support an industry that cannot support itself? Oil and gas are not money makers. They just aren't. And we cover it up all the time. And, and when I, you know, in, in some of the readings I've done and some, and some people that I've spoken to, the skill sets of people that work in natural resource extraction can mm -hmm. absolutely be transformed to work on green technology. And I, and I mean within months, not within years or decades, even though that's okay too. But within months, we could transform industry. Does it take front-loading investment? Absolutely. But yes, so we seem to be able to do that in so many ways, you know, but not necessarily when it comes to green. And look, we're running out of time. Yeah. And when you, when you see people in D.C., I mean, around the world, there's, there's horrific fires, right? Realities. But... You know, the fact that, you know, we can't even go one summer without people having to lose their homes, lit and burn to the ground, for God's sakes, right? Mm -hmm. Like, these are, these are things that we can't control. Um, charity and, you know, the, 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 the military having to come in to, to evacuate people, you know, that's, that, 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 that doesn't sound like a good country to me. That doesn't sound like a country that's actually thinking ahead uh, yeah. at all. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and again, the, all these things intersect, right? Um, and obviously, sorry, I should also mention, um, for all Canadians to really address those issues around 
you know, economic justice is tied to racial justice, right? It's tied to, yeah. uh, you know, transforming and, and moving away from, you know, policing and enforcement measures that do nothing but create, you know, more segregation and, and more uh, oppression of specific groups. Um, and I have to speak the one broken, pro- one broken promise that I just can't understand why is still there. Actually, maybe two. Um, why is there still a ban? When it comes to gay men or, or, or those, you know, men who engage in sex with other men, why is there still a blood ban? Um, they, they were supposed to get rid of that. I mean, it should never have been in place, but, you know, they were saying, oh, it's a year. Now it's six months. It's still there. Yeah. And it's absolutely outrageous that that is still there. And I would say that there's still work to do on conversion therapy because this election all of a sudden just happened. But are they really going to take a stronger stand? I don't think their stand is strong enough. So I would say that there's a lot of issues within uh, the queer community that, that, that are yet to be answered uh, yeah. by our federal government. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cut you off there. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, there is quite the list. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to uh, Policy and Rights here on Depictions Media Radio. I'm your host, uh, Michael Cloggs. And... Thank you so much to our our wonderful guest, uh, Annie Ohana. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening today, and thank you for supporting us with our sponsors. Please go to depictions.media for more information, and click on our contact link and let us know how we can help, how we can help bring your story and help bring us to a better world. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.